Online and IBC Vice Chair Kony Maina and Commissioner Margaret Mwachanya make an unexpected appearance at anniversary towers purportedly to resume duty. Never mind that they had publicly announced their resignation on April 16th, along with fellow commissioners that is Paul Krugat and the three-sided lack of faith in Chairman Wafula Chibukati's leadership. But they are finding out that it's not that easy. Chebukati did not waste time in dismissing them, saying they even went so far as to clear from the commission. The incident was triggered by the suspension of CEO Ezra Chiloba, which is a big part of the reason that the electoral body is in a quagmire. And tonight, Wafula Chebukati, the IABC chair, opens up the big story. The procedure of resigning and clearing is very clear. They returned all the assets of the commission, the vehicles, the laptops, the phones, the budgets for IBC, the insurance cards. So all, all the assets were returned and as far as the commission is concerned, they are no longer commissioners of IABC. Now, IABC does not have offices for former commissioners. IBC doesn't have offices for former commissioners. That is part of the statement that was made by Chebukati earlier today. Let's also note that one is Aya Biwot Kangwoni, who describes himself as a Kenyan male of sound mind, is challenging the legality of the commission as presently constituted. He has filed a petition against IBC and the Attorney General. We're going to get to the, some of the clips or some of the documents there. <clears throat> there you go on your screen. Of course, it is Monday, the 27th day of August, 2018. Good evening and welcome to the big story right here on KTN News. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim. So, tonight on the big story, we host the chairman of the election observation group, Mule Musau, and lawyers Felix Odiambo and Steve Ogola, who are here with me in studio. Actually, uh, Odiambo is going to join us uh, shortly. Our lead reporter, Sophia Onuna, also joins us live from our city center studios with Samson Cherargay, the Nandi senator, senator, who appears tonight in his capacity as the chair of the Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights Committee in the Senate. But before we cross over to the CBD studios, let's now set uh, the background of tonight's big story with this report by our reporter, Moremi Mwangi. Our position as commissioners under his leadership no longer tenable. It has been four months since this announcement that saw former electoral body IEBC's commissioners, Consulat and Katha, Margaret Mochanya and Paul Kurgat, call it quits at the electoral commission. But not quite yet. Early Monday morning, Mochanya and Nkatha made a second attempt to resume their duties at the commission's anniversary towers offices. IBC does not have offices for former commissioners. You cannot come here and say, I'm a former commissioner, give me space to work from here. And so, as far as we are concerned, they are not supposed to be working here. Nkatha and Mochanya had sought audience with Commission Chairman Wafula Chebukati to discuss modalities of their comeback following Justice Wilfrida Okwani's August 10th ruling, dismissing the Commissioner's resignation as an procedural. But after two hours of sitting in the boardroom with no sign of Chebukati, Nkatha and Mochanya walked out. I didn't manage to see them, but I asked them to go and put in writing what they want to see me about and if and when they do so then we shall address the issues which they may want to deal with but nkatha and mochanya it appears could have sealed their own fate in these affidavits dated 8th may the two affirmed their resignation at the high court where activist okia omutata claimed that treasury was yet to stop remittance of their salaries in their separate affidavits nkatha mochanya and kurgat claimed that their stay at the commission became totally untenable after Chebukati ordered withdrawal of their security and blocked their salaries through the treasury, even before President Uhuru Kenyatta could react to their resignation letters. I'm not certain whether that was done. Up to now, I've not got a feedback on my letter, but I believe that uh, uh, treasury acted on the, the recommendations from the commission that they are no longer in office and I hope they are not being paid. 
Kurgat has conspicuously detached himself from the Mochanya and Kavakambak attempt. When contacted, Kurgat told KTN News that he is waiting for the legal process to take its course. Bache Bukati, it appears, is already planning on their replacement. Alongside Commissioner Roslina Kombe, who quit the commission days to last year's October 26th repeat presidential poll. The committee of parliament which oversights the commission is working on a bill. And also the, the Senate committee uh, is also working on a similar uh, concept. So that we now have a situation where uh, they set up a selection panel and then new commissioners will be recruited. Now with key financial and legal queries into the acrimonious 2017 polls yet to be fully unraveled, the attempted return by the resigned commissioners no doubt raises more eyebrows as the anniversary towers drama continues. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News, in Nairobi. Of course, the report by Moremi Mwangi sets the tone for our discussion tonight on the big story. Before I engage my guest tonight, let me bring in my colleague Sophia Wanuna from the CBD studio. Sophia, good evening. Good evening, Yusuf. So the return of Margaret Mwachanya and Connie Miner to the IBC headquarters here in the Central Business District has been greeted by a palpable outrage around the country. They announced their resignation earlier in April and now they are back following that judgment. And according to their interpretation is that uh, what they been able to see what the judge said from the High Court after a voter moved to find to uh, seeking a finding that the Commission was irregularly composed uh, in as far as the numbers because of the resignation of the four uh, commissioners including Kurgat and of course earlier last year remember Rosemary uh, as well however the judge finding that whilst there was yes public pronouncements press statements uh, there was no official uh, declaration of vacancy on the position and so she could not uh, find that in fact the commission was not properly constituted but important to note tonight uh, Yusuf is that the drama the shameful drama that has largely been described as, as that is something we've not seen just now it's been playing out almost one year because you remember just before the repeat uh, presidential election last year there was that leaked memo and that's when things started falling apart literally at the IEBC forcing them to go for a retreat and since then it has been issue after issue up until this moment but one of the things you've talked about then Murimi has mentioned in his story is that these commissioners or former commissioners unclear how to refer to them at this particular point they said they've written to the president tendering the resignation however the presidency has been mum on this even when the chair has written to confirm or whether they received this communique and what action is being taken he has said there has not been any feedback but other than the appointing authority that is the president parliament has a key role and the oversight body over uh, the IEBC is the justice and legal affairs committee and tonight I speak with the chair that's uh, Mr. Cherar Gay he's a senator as well of Nandi County thank you so much for making for us time for us tonight uh, let's begin with uh, don't you feel at this point you have failed kenyans that we have seen this play out for over a year and many analysts have opined the reason we are seeing the hesitance with the president to acknowledge receipt of this uh, resignation is that then it would tender us in uncharted waters in that there is no mechanism to recruit new commissioners i think uh, the law is in place on so our commissioner should be replaced and you who have heard that uh, the the three commissioners although rosalina combat resigned uh, had written to the appointing authority and even the chair did do follow up as parliament we are still working on our report and uh, we are waiting for the audit report remember there is also boardroom wars between the secretariat and the commissioners so as parliament will play a key role but you know it, this thing needs also apart from the legislative and legal process, it needs political solution. Mind you, one of the key uh, uh, area of uh, the handshake task force is on the issue of electoral justice. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, as we even do findings, you know, we have not, uh, the law demands that within the six months or within a certain period after the elections, the IEBC must submit uh, the audit report to the parliament for its assessment. Up to that level, we have not, uh, the, the IEBC as it is constituted, have not given us a way forward because 
they have said that the the audit is yet to be out and i think uh, as kenyans i want to agree that uh, this is an an, an a fairly a very uh, unique uh, situation in kenya but as parliament we will ensure we play our role but now we need to now the the the, the ruling by the court now has complicated even things more worse because uh, the the appointing authority has not given a note to the assignation yet now the court uh, the high court has said that the three commissioners uh, didn't resign uh, as per se but also what we, we of course we when when the the IBC commissioners appeared before us uh, before we went for recess they were very clear that uh, they were they won't resign the three of them and they were clear that the chair said that the three commissioners did resign but okay. up to now that is a very unique situation as you have said you excuse Parliament but I'll take you back to once this commissioners were interviewed and and, and, and joined the IBC the selection panel that undertook that process that term ended with this particular commission so that parliament should have come up with that mechanism to set a new selection panel the laws the guiding process that is not there and that is not on the appointing authority that is not on these commissioners it's on parliament what have you done you know now we must uh, what is important is that we should look at the audit of the IBC after the general election but of what does that have to do with the selection panel sir no we of course we agree that last time as I say this needs political so you remember the selection panel that was formed was out of a cry to Orengo led that came up with the amendments and the, you remember also when the commissioners came into place but I but even as we try to bring in guidelines and put into legislative framework or policy framework on selection panel we must also audit we must look at the how the IBC performs so that by the time we are coming up with selection panel we we look we take a stock because it will be very unfair to Kenyans we go ahead and put in place a legislative or policy framework in terms of selection panel yet again we come and look at the audit report by the time also we conclude it will also mean we, we go back you're talking about two different things i think audit is a whole different issue and that we're having internal audits going on at the iebc you have the auditor general as well dealing with that we're talking about perhaps as parliament complicating the work of the president because if he then acknowledges receipt of these re resignations then what happens no, we are in limbo so you're not answering my question in as far as what has stopped you to be able to put together a mechanism because that joint committee of parliament said that the parliament then would set up the mechanism why hasn't that happened i want to agree because we are still on working our reports you remember they they I did appear on jail at the national assembly and also and then we need concurrence so we are still working on our own report when we now table our report, it will set into motion how now we need to exit. But as you have said rightly, it is when the president will accept and agree that we need to replace uh, the other commissioners. But there is varied opinion. You know, these are political political players. You, you don't that... need to wait for the president with due respect. Parliament needs to set out regulation and outline how this needs to unfold. So your report has nothing to do. These are two different processes. You and know, you're joining them. You know, legislative uh, process grows. You, you know, that's the point. Mm -hmm. When we, we, we look at the report or when we, we have reviewed what the IBC has presented before us. For example, I can give you an example. In the past we have always been removing only IBC commissioners but, but what happens to the secretariat and even as we put the selection panel you know the challenge now is how to come up with that model because last time you remember the the political parties did nominate and religious leaders did play a critical role so in as much as we, we need to come up with guidelines and legislative and policy framework we must agree on the formula of developing that selection panel and you know this is an emotive and political process by the we must have all actors we are happy now that the handshake has happened say that now when we go to parliament at least the the NASA and the Jubilee site will be easy to push an agenda yes. and that is what we are critically looking at yes. but I agree that we need to put in place because last time Kenyans are now complaining that we did put religious leaders to some of them to do the selection process but it reached a point where both political parties NASA and Jubilee were no longer trusting each other and it reached a time that the commissioners were branded that but the main concern is we need to even as we look at the replacement or even uh, reconstituting the IBC we must look also at the secretariat so that in future we don't have these board rumors where the commissioners are fighting with the secretariat. So would it be inaccurate to say that as parliament you are waiting to get the lead from this because you have mentioned the the building bridges the initiative, authority, yes. the building bridges and their team and the work they are doing. Are you waiting for their recommendations to guide the way, as opposed to you taking your rightful mandate and playing that rightful role by coming up with legislation and that mechanism, as opposed to 
or are you just waiting for that political solution from this team? You know, Sophia, it is, it, the issue of IBC is very emotive. You, you must agree with me on that. And therefore, even as we have said, bullying breaches, report on electoral justice, you know, we want to bring everybody on board so that we, you know, the, the IBC, any IBC in this country, after any general election, it dies or there is a lot of complication or they are chased out. We want by the time we, 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 we reconstitute or uh, replace or do anything that with any IBC, it should be a, 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 a solution that everybody has accepted from all quarters, the key stakeholders, like political uh, parties, the church, the clergy, the Kenyans. So in fact, as we win that confidence and integrity of IBC, we must factor in everybody's stakeholders. Imagine even if we go ahead today and reconstitute and maybe replace the IBC or disband the IBC, we might at the end of the day when the uh, Building Bridges Initiative uh, comes out with their report, they might uh, recommend that uh, you need to, to, to disband the IBC. But are their recommendations binding you or a constitutional body? The Bridging Bridges, uh, Building Bridges Initiative team is not. You know, so the, you cannot the, the say your work the, will be rendered futile because they have decided something the, different. The it has, still would still come back. does not live in a vacuum. So if today we, we can reconstitute, but you know, in as much as the law gives us that power to do that, but, but the, the confidence of Kenyans, what will it be? If the recommendation that will come up, you, you heard the building bridges will go around the country. And you know, under Article 10 of our constitution, one of the key integral parts of this constitution is public participation. If the building bridges task force comes back, and yet we have reconstituted and gone ahead, and they say, now the, the IBC commissions you have, or the secretariat, the Kenyans do not have confidence. And yet Kenyans have a elected these members we have huge huge representation in parliament so you're talking about it's like you're ceding power to this team to go around the country we have representation each constituency of members of parliament but let me ask you this which is more worrying sir the time question that this matter is dragging on last year is when Akombe resigned almost one year later now you're talking about waiting for the building bridges it's like parliament has no in and of itself that capacity and yet you are the representatives of the people not this particular team, with due respect to them, of course. No, I agree. We have the mandate, and I'm told you we are working on finalizing on our report. From the report, it would now give us to set in motion. And now, at least now, it is easy to do a bipartisan with both uh, from NASA and Jubilee. I agree we need to push that one for, uh, very fast. So the mandate that we are trying to look is to develop. You know, the, the law does not exist in vacuum. The law can say it is illegal or anything can bring an illegality. But in as much as we are doing that, we, we don't create this law or we don't dispute people in an ideal situation or a vacuum. We must agree, have a consensus. And in fact, one of the radical proposals in future, even as we form commission in the near future, we must give opportunity to, to, to the political parties now to be the key players in the decision of who becomes the, the commissioner so that we avoid this distrust and any perception that being tagged that they belong to a particular section of the party. And therefore, all those issues we must agree. And I think you, you need to give us time. By the time we come from recess, maybe towards the end of September, we'll be able to table our report and set everything in motion, but you know as the law agrees that the appointing authority must now uh, even as we sit, the appointing authority must now agree either the resignation or not and even we will be seeking now the guidance even of the speaker at some point to look at now that the, the ruling of the high court because in as much as we want to exit and ensure, but Kenyans should not worry, it is better now to take a longer time to rectify than the, before the, the general election is still very far of 2022. But we're rather dragging the feet that we might get 2021 and there's still no real recourse and direction no 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 we, we will ensure that even before the end of this year we will ensure that we have fixed all these issues and ensure that we rectify even the law we want to the, as it was before before it was amended we it's also some of the aspects so that we prevent the what we are looking at the, the that we are putting the country in limbo in terms of and i agree with you that we need to move fast because the there is a by-election that is coming in migori for example there are many what by-elections we need also to give them the commissioners should get a capacity even there is a significant step that the, the current IBC did make is having county returning officers. So we are trying and restrain the credibility. But you know what is important is the credibility, the confidence that Kenyans have with the IBC. Mm -hmm. But I want to assure you before the end of the year, we'll have ensured that we fix this yeah. and, and set the IBC moving. But finally, mm -hmm. you know the challenge that we also the IBC is facing is a massive budget cut.
So even as we go as, as we go forward, we must also talk with the Treasury to ensure that we rectify and ensure that even as we reconstitute or put in place the new IBC, yeah. do they have uh, the necessary resources to, 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 to continue with their work? Briefly and finally, you've mentioned about the credibility of IBC and many have questioned that, but credibility of Parliament as well is in question because you talk about now reversing the laws. You reversed... Last year, you amended just before the repeat election so that even as members of parliament, you're meant to be securing uh, and taking care of the interest of Wanjiko, but we see how swift you are to change. So now you're saying the amendments you made before the repeat presidential election, you want to change them back to what they were before. No, no, no. You know, you, know, you want to agree with me that uh, the, 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 the constitution gives power. The, the High Court and other, the judicial process to interpret the Constitution. Some of those sections were declared unconstitutional the, the other day. So, you know, if it is consistent with the law, then it is unconstitutional. But was it so even wrong in the first place to change laws as lawmakers? No, Krigler's recommendations do not change election laws a year to the election. You change them days to a repeat election. But, but, Surely. But, Isn't that dishonest? No, no, it's not being dishonest. As you have originally put it before when we started this interview, mm -hmm. that the role of Parliament is to do oversight and legislation. We amend the law, we delete, we replace, and therefore, basing on the circumstances, because we cannot just uh, today sit and agree, we must review the law at any given point in time. But now we need to take a stock saying that the moment we amended the, this election's law up to a particular point, what, what do we need to do in the future so that we, we continue to protect credibility and continue to protect the transparency and confidence of Kenyans in the IEBC and even the election's laws that we have in this country? And therefore, even as the guiding principle of the constitutional court, we must also adhere so that we protect the supremacy of the constitution mm -hmm. and ensure that we give it into place that is necessary. But I want to assure Kenyans we'll ensure these IEBC issues are fixed within time so that uh, going forward uh, we, we give them capacity to commissioners. We also give them the strength so that they can continue. You know, they are now with the devolution. We would want to see that IEBC also ensures that it entrenches itself with the principles of uh, devolution and ensure that what we saw in county returning officers, we need to see even that their officers are strengthened so that even as we continue going ahead the IBC can still do its work as provided by the constitution. Briefly JLAC, oversight over IBC what can you tell Kenyans? You say you'll do it as soon as possible. When is it? Give us a timeline. Uh, uh, in the next uh, few months maybe before in the next three months, 90 days so that as we table our report we can also look at many other aspects and you know even as we table our report we'll need to, to consult all stakeholders so that we don't run into headwinds of, of fighting again distrust, okay. credibility but I want to ensure Kenyans that they should rest this. We are on top of this thing and we'll continue to fix. We, we, of course, we are aware there are many issues, but I want to assure Kenyans going forward, if there is a reconstitution of the uh, replacement or disbandment or reconstitution of commissioners, we'll also fix the secretariat so that we, we protect the integrity of IBC. All right. Yeah. Many thanks, Senator thank and thank Chair of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the Senate with us tonight saying and reassuring Kenyans in his words that soon these matters will be resolved. Yusuf. Thank you very much, Sophie. It seems matters IABC is not only emotive but also confusing in the fact that the appointing authority, appointing authority is still mum over this development at the anniversary towers. In the studio, we still have the election observation group chair, Mule Musawis, the ELOG chair. We expect him to come any moment from now, but I still have uh, lawyer Felix of the as well as lawyer Steve Vogola, two individuals who have experience on matters electoral system in this uh, country. I'm going to engage them uh, shortly, but before that, big story. Thanks a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.